Memories is such a beautiful thing. I don't want to take them for granted. So let me reminisce for a minute. Y'all reminisce with me. Let's see if y'all remember this. Let's go. Remember when we was youngest, but we ever knew we was poor. Six of us in the bed, others sleep on the floor. Remember, leave it to beaver and hide, go seek. Three stooges, late night, there was all we was doing. Remember, Hawaiian Silky and the S girl. To get them naps out, that was our back route. Remember, you might get killed for a starter coat. A starter hat, that's where them snap back started at. Yeah, I remember knocking on doors and running was all in the name of fun. We just had to be in the sun. And remember, I remember truth and dare with the homies. Things happen that I probably shouldn't share with your homie. I remember though. Do you remember way back when? All those crazy things happened mm. When we were young, it was fun Said some things and some things got done, yeah And I ain't seen you all so long But I promise I'ma hold on To the memories way back when Way back, way back when Remember British nights, ladies and college bros Show to see boots was popping Remember 90s clothes Hey, peeps How y'all doing today? Today is February the 8th, Thursday at 11.08 in the a.m. Thursday, people. It's my Friday. Yeah. It's one of those days. I had to clean the bathroom up this morning. Had to write my scripture for the refrigerator this morning. Been getting up salt. Especially in that area over there by the front door. And when you vacuum it, it pops. It be popping everywhere. So I had to get the hand vacuum, like, just suck up, peek still, peek still, peek still, peek still. Like, this is such, so tedious. But yeah, I want to do a read today. Chapter 21, his marriage. Y'all, I'm almost through. Y'all forget how many chapters I have in this book. I have 31 chapters and I'm on chapter 21. I only have 10 more chapters to go. Wow. Wow. Read all this. And only got this much to go. Yes. So, this should be, I was thinking about trying to put this video up today, Thursday. I don't know, I'm going to see. I don't know, I'm going to see if I can get it up today or just probably have it for my Friday video. I washed my hair, sham braided it. I hid it in like a scrunchie all the braids pull back because I just don't like my hair like touching me like that but anyways let's get into this read y'all ready I know y'all ready okay his marriage before I was married, one of the traits I knew I wanted in a husband was an avid disinterest in sports. I detested the thought of being with someone the rest of my life who spent every spare moment on a couch with remote in hand watching football, baseball, basketball, and golf. One of the things I admire most about Michael when we first started dating was that he never mentioned sports when we worked together. In fact, he claimed to be completely bored with them. You can imagine how shocked I was when several years after we were married, he became not merely interested in sports, but obsessed. If the Chicago Bears lost, so ultimately did the rest of the family. 
when the Cubs won, everyone around him went down from his screaming. He wasn't content to see an occasional game. He had to see every game. He wasn't a passive observer. He dressed up in Bears t-shirts and Cub hats and jumped up and down. I tried going to games with him, but I found more intrigue in the hot dogs. I tried watching sports with him on TV, but the boredom was excruciating. I gave in to resentment over the fact that it seemed he would rather watch a sporting event than spend time with his family. It wasn't until years later when I really started praying about our marriage that things changed. For some reason, unfathomable unfathomable where'd she get that word from <laughs> unfathomable to me God didn't take away my husband's interest in sport like I prayed instead he gave me peace and a new perspective on it we worked out a compromise when I wouldn't pressure him to deny himself sports if he wouldn't put pressure on me to fiend interest I would not accuse him of tactical deception before we were married if he would allow me the same courtesy. This may seem like a minor concern in a marriage, but these kind of things add up and, and, come, and, and become pivotal in determining whether a marriage stays together or falls apart. Today, I enjoy football. Who knew? Praying about all aspects of a marriage keeps the concept of divorce from gaining any hold. So we mustn't, mustn't neglect the major issues, even if we think they don't apply to us. From the day we were married, I pray that there will be no divorce or adultery in our future. Mm. Mm. Although there was no history of either of those in our family backgrounds, Divorce and adultery had so saturated our culture and the business we were in that they were almost expected in some circles. I pray that God would preserve our marriage from any such destruction. He had been faithful to answer those prayers. Marriage is great when two people enter into it with a mutual commitment to keep it strong no matter what. Mm. But often a couple will have preconceived ideas about who the other is and how married life is supposed to be. And then reality hits. That's when their kingdom can become divided. Mm, their kingdom can become divided. I like that. You have to continually pray that any unreal expectations be exposed, and all, in, all incompatibilities be smoothed out so that you grow together in the spirit of unity, commitment, and a bond of intimacy. Pray that your marriage is a place where two agree so God will be in the midst of it. Matthew 18, 19 through 20. If either of you has been married before, Pray that you do not bring any residue from, from that into your marriage. Now, break any ties, good or bad, emotional or spiritual, with any form of relationships. You heard? You can't move forward into the future if you have a foot stuck in the past. I like that. You can't move forward into the future if you have a foot stuck in the past don't take your marriage for granted no matter how great it is let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall first corinthians 10 12. well 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 pray for your marriage to be protected from any person or situation that could destroy it Ask the Lord to do whatever it takes to keep the marriage intact. Even if it's meaning striking one of you with lightning. 
Ooh, when you think about giving it all up. Ooh, pray that God will make your marriage a source of joy mm, and life to both of you. And not a drudgery, a thorn, a dread, an irritation, or a temporary condition. Wow. Wow. That was good. 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 And y'all already know I always have to have an input. I'm not, I'm not feeling so talkative today. <laughs> but anyways, we got that done before I go into my input. Next is the prayer. Prayer is short. I might do the power tools with that. We'll see. But a lot of times she been on um, the power tools be in the chapter and she puts them in a prayer. So we'll see. But yeah, I get that. Like, the hubby, most men's, majority of men's, are in, they have their thing. You know, some like working on cars, some like building things, like carpentry skills, some like to watch sports, especially a lot of black. Well, I ain't gonna even say, I don't even think that's a race thing, but you do that have a lot of African American men's or colored men's playing sports. That pulls uh, a lot of colored men to watch sports and everything, you know. So, with that being said, most of the time they done played it in high school, maybe even grammar school, and maybe a little bit in college. So, that's really kind of like when you meet a man, that's kind of, hey, you know, you, it's a give and take situation. You know, you I feel like, because my husband played, uh, basketball all four years of high school. He was in the paper. He run like a lot of trophies. He was good. So when we when we got together and we'll start, you know, like going to parks and everything, he always had to play a game or two or three. It didn't bother me though, cause I, I it's just I knew. You know what I'm saying? I just knew and everything. He was so he was so deep. He would keep a ball in whatever vehicle we had up until, man, I mean, till he might have turned, like, 45. <laughs> he still have a ball. He just don't keep it in the vehicle. Now, if we going to the uh, park, he'll get the, take the ball out the basement and put it in the vehicle. But he used to always keep the ball in the vehicles. And in the beginning, I watched sports with him because it was, well, I used to like football myself when like Walt Payton and stuff was playing and uh, the refrigerator, you know, them, they was playing. I liked that. And um, what's his name? Joe Montana, I think in his name is. I liked it, that team. So, I used to do that before I even met my husband. So, football was kind of my thing. But when I got with him, he liked it like Scotty, Michael. He was deep. That's his passion. That's his thing, you know. So, I, I, I kind of like got with it. I started watching games with him, learning the moves, learning the calls, and he'll take his time out and explain it to me. I did it for years, y'all. I think up until, like, Michael left, it started getting boring to me after that. Now, I have no interest, but that's okay. Because I think in the beginning of our marriage, it, like, bonded us on that level. Like, and then, like, he, he wasn't about... Like, well, I really want to about have a whole bunch of people come up in my house that just, you know, hood life, uh-uh. All them people coming over, drinking and all that, no. I was on something different. So, I was like his little friend watching games with him. Move, Rain. Move. I was, I was like his friend watching games with him. And I did it up until, like... My daughter, one, it's like three of my, three, 
before the kids started getting into watching games with him. So I kind of like drifted off. Then I eventually got me a computer and I really started drifting off. And like now, he watching, I be up in here, you know, I listen and I might glance here. I know what be going on though. For some reason, I just, I'm just i just in tune with, you know, with who winning. I be knowing, I be paying attention, but I just don't actually sit there and give it my full attention. I like my games. So it's like I said, it's like a give and take. Females have a thing they like to do too. You know, and they have a thing they like to do. And I don't think that's um, you know, it's you got to pray for balance. That's something you need to do. But uh my hubby don't go out. He done been there and done all that. So he like to chill, come home from a hard day's work and watch his game. We good. I do what I do during the day, and then some get some, you know, Friday nights, Saturday nights, we come together as a, a whole family. But during the week, I might watch a couple of programs with him. It all depends on what I'm feeling like, or I might watch some vlogs, or I might play me some games. But it ain't no big deal today, you know. But I think, and I think when we got together, I believe God gave me that, and I didn't even pray for it to spend that time with him. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to, like, if it was just watching basketball or, uh, I think it, it mostly was basketball. He not too long. Uh, football, that wasn't a big thing, but he watched that now. And now even sometimes he'll watch college football which he was never into that and that college basketball i guess that's what happened when you start getting older and everything but i like to just spend that time with him and actually i got into it you know it was it was it was it was what it was back then and that feeling that i felt it, it stayed there long enough for the kids to grow up and keep them company basically and I actually have daughters that watch watch games with watch games with him. Rena now she like to watch them. Now I hit my child number five, child number six, Georgie, you know. But he like to watch it on his little tabby thing. He kind of like being in his room doing homework and stuff. So he be he don't be in here like they be in here. But uh, I think he be at peace and um, he be content. And that's what it's about, but, I mean, we know when it's not a balance to it, you know. And, well, I did have an issue with him when I'm like, it's snowing, for real. You need to shovel the snow up because we have a male lady. And, you know, I put myself in her situation. If I was delivering mail... I would want to track through a whole bunch of snow and be walking up on people's porch with a whole bunch of snow or ice and have to take a chance of slipping and falling. So I be I be thinking about people like that. And so I be like, look, you need to go out and shovel that snow and put some salt down before um, it get cold and freeze up and before our male lady have to deliver our mail and everything, you know, it's just being considerate and thoughtful. So I'm like, I had to go through a little speech just the other day because we been getting a lot of snow and we got like, they said we could get by tomorrow, Friday, we could get close to 10 plus inches of snow. Okay, cool. I don't care about you watching the game. But like I told him, the time that you, the hours you spend watching a game behind the game, you could have knocked that snow out and been a came back to the game. That's all I'm saying. Okay? And everything. So I did have to say something about that and everything. But uh, I don't know what game's coming on, but I know we got a lot of more snow coming. I'm like, hey, you probably need to pull out that snow blower and everything and get her done. And then chill. But that's something that he know he responsible for you know come on don't start slacking you know so yeah but other than that 
Yeah, you have to be on one accord and everything because, like, sometimes I'll be watching certain vlogs and stuff, and I'll be like certain videos when I used to do a lot of research about all the things. I'll be like, babe, babe, come here, let me show you this, let me show you this. He'll get out the bed. I could, I, I be, he be kind of reluctant, but he'll come and watch, watch it. Then he'll pull the chair up. He get into it. He'll pull the chair up and watch it with me. And even now, if it's a certain video or a vlog or some video I watch, and I'd be like, mm, I want him to hear this. I want him to see this. I'm like, babe, come here. And he'll come and he'll pull up a chair because he know that's my thing. You know, he know I like to watch vlogs. He know how I like. I like to watch. I like the research. And some he'll come and look and pull up a chair and everything, you know. So it's a give and take, you know, and everything. I mean, in the beginning, when I used to read books, he'll actually read books with me. We'll take turns reading a paragraph and everything. So this is the beginning thing. And I think that that... It does something to the relationship. It be a, it be creating bonds and stuff. So we did a lot of that. Now, I after a while, I start reading books with him. Read to my kids. Now I don't really read to my kids. I read. I like reading, but I love reading. You know that's my passion. So now when I want to do YouTube and make videos and everything, he was on board. No hesitation, no nothing. Like, that's what you want to do, do. Got me a camera, got me a tripod, any, got me some, yeah, whatever. Whatever I bring it to him that want to take it to another level, he got my back and everything. And that's how we roll now, you know what I'm saying? But I think we kind of been like that from the, from the get-go, you know. But we just don't feel in sync with each other now. So, yeah, I really liked it, that read. And... It's something to think about when y'all do come to those type of hurdles and stuff. Thank you, Shane. It's wrong. I'm saying. I'm going to eat it, though. <laughs> but, yeah, when y'all come to them hurdles, before you argue, just think about it. You know, like, uh, it's, it's cool. You know, but you could tell. That's why you get, people need wisdom. You need to pray because you will get a feel if you doing something too much and you know like pray for balancing with the things you doing in your life where you're not neglecting your husband when you could just say you know what i'm gonna put my phone down i'm gonna turn i'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the computer off or i'm just walk away from the computer and i'm gonna just go and talk to my husband and see what's on his mind how what what's going on because men is not that verbal like we are sometimes you just got to go and ask them what's going on what's up what you thinking about you know I'll, something just to start that conversation and before you know it you'll be like oh yeah y'all don't talk about an hour an hour and a half because that's how we do and everything wow. you know i get that feel like sometimes you could just when you in sync with each other sometimes you could just feel when it's that time y'all need to talk or you just need to spend some quality time verbal ver verbal like just talking because me and my hubby we like this we we talk about everything we like this and everything so i feels him and he feels me we know and everything so yeah instead of arguing about things when y'all come to these little hurdles and stuff if he ain't spending enough time with the kids and this that and the other pick your time pray about it Talk about it and everything. Not yell, not holler, not belittle, not shout. But just talk. Like, you know what? I mean, sometimes you got to use a little strategy. You got to have a little strategy going on when you bring stuff to them, too. So, I mean, you got to kind of kind of figure that out. It, it all depends on your husband's personality and everything. You got to, like, study them. And, like, okay. I think this is a good timing right now. But yeah, they getting ready to do their gym. That's the band that they using right there. So, and it's lunchtime, so I'm getting ready to eat lunch. And, um, yeah, getting ready to eat lunch. And I'm going to try to have this video up. If I could get it up today, today, Thursday, but if not, definitely Friday. I suppose get my grandkids this weekend, Friday. But I know it's going to be a lot, a lot of the snow going to be coming down start tonight. They said we might get three to five and it's going to tomorrow. 
they talking about it now. And so, hopefully they come, but it's okay, because I don't want, you know, you know, you know, if they come, I get some footage. If not, I get some footage whenever they come. <laughs> so, what? Well, it's supposed to snow real bad tomorrow. It all depends. Maurice, oh, you got that menu planned out of everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure Maurice will probably bring them. Yeah. That's my my daughter husband name, Maurice. But on that note, y'all, I'm out. I hope everybody have a blessed day, safe day, a productive day, get it done, and a protective day slash weekend because this will be this this video is it for the week and. I'll be seeing y'all next week. And on that note, peace and love. Share some and I holla. Bye y'all. Memories is such a beautiful thing. I don't want to take them for granted. Remember British nights, ladies and college bros, Joe to see boots was popping. Remember 90s clothes, who had a pair of bibs, cross color, I guess. Either a Turkish chain, a heron bone, or your neck. Fellas, there's a jealous girl in our town. Music by ABC, poison by BBD, SWV had every girl weak in the knees. Whatever group we was all listening to. All